Okay, I cleaned up all my messes. It's just basically um, things that were not uh, selected and didn't get raised up, just because I didn't select them correctly in the first place. I was too quick about it. Um, now we're going to go to our side view again. And this time we need to uh, we need to select all these top edges. The easiest way to do that is make sure you have the this set properly, and then use a box select and just get that top edge. And then we take a look from the, the side to make sure that we really box selected what we thought we'd box selected. And everything looks good. We don't want this door here, just like before. So we'll get rid of that. And we go back to the points so you can see what we're doing. And extrude up to here. Good. Do it again. Up to here. Good. And now we can take a look at our model. And turn off the clear. It's easier to see what we have. But and now you have a nice model with nice doors. It's all 3D. The next step. Oh yeah, I told you I'd separate this out. Um, again, it's pretty easy to do. I could have sworn I already did this, but I guess not. Um, we get well. First of all, unselect everything with A, A, and um, A again selects everything. So deselects and selects all. So box, box select. There we go. Um, you can see there was black black spots here that kind of gave it away. Um, I didn't turn this on, which means I didn't select all the points underneath the top points, which would be a mess. So we got to make sure we select what we want to select. And now we've got everything. Now um, there's a bunch of different uh, under vertices here. Rip, split, separate. Separate puts it to a separate object, which is what we want. P would be the shortcut key. And we want selection by material. And there we go. Now we have three separate objects. It's also a really good idea to um, put each one of these objects on a different layer. And you do that by selecting the object and then using the M key and then selecting the layer you want to move it to. There. Um, and this one also, M to the third layer. And right now you can see you can't see those. They're on different layers and we can't see those layers. However, if you look down here, you'll see there's a selected and then another layer and the other layer. And they have little circles in here to indicate that there are objects in there. Uh, we can shift click and have all of them selected and see all of them at once. It's also a really good idea to put the lights and the camera on a different layer. Um, however, you may run into a problem if you try to render and you have the layer with your camera and your object, but not the layer with your lights, there will be no light in your scene and you won't see anything. So if that ever happens to you, make sure you've got your, your light layer selected in there. Same with the camera, it could not be selected. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna finish up by doing the same process to these other two things here. And um, then I'm gonna stack them on top of each other so we'll now have a model that is nine meters thick, which often makes it quite difficult to put the shell around it like it looks in the picture. Um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it should be easy. They claim there's a lot of uh, tankage or between the interior walls and the exterior walls. Um, and we, so we have a lot of room to play. Thank you for watching part two. Oh yeah, if you have any questions, please ask and please let me know if these tutorials are helping you or if I'm missing things you want to learn.